Hallelujah. And happy Easter. We are glad you are here. We are glad you are worshiping with us on this Easter Sunday, the day in which we celebrate resurrection. We celebrate that God is with us, that Christ is alive, and that we experience God every day, new and afresh. And one way we know we experience God is through music. So I invite you to ready your hearts, prepare your hearts, minds, and souls to encounter God as the handbell choir brings us our prelude. I invite you all to stand as you are able and join me in our open <clears throat> our opening hymn from the United Methodist Hymnal, number 302, Christ the Lord has risen today. <laughs>
invite you to join me in the call to worship. Quiet and persistent God. You work miracles in the silence and the hush before dawn. Strong and surprising God. You roll away every stumbling stone and bring life to our dead ends. Whirling, dancing God. You delight in empty tombs and surprise visits. Easter God. You give us joy and cause hallelujahs to flow head to toe. Let us continue with our hymn of praise from the United Methodist Hymnal number 303, The Day of Resurrection. together in our statement of faith. We believe in an Easter God who transforms darkness into light, hatred into acceptance, and despair into hope. We believe God is always working for good, changing every good Friday nightmare into an Easter dream of new possibilities. We believe in the risen Christ, who befriends us on our roads of searching and worry, who touches us through song and silence, word and gesture, who calls us by name to enter the dance of life. We believe in the Spirit, the hidden presence behind every rolled away stone, who beckons us to lead tomb-like living and trust the gracious invitation to live joyfully. We believe the Spirit is always renewing the church and making us a people who practice loving kindness, encourage a deepening faith, and work for unequivocal justice for all creation. We believe that we are an Easter people, a sign that with God all things are possible. time for our young disciples time so I'd like to invite the children to come forward if they are comfortable come on maybe anyone all right you know what I'm just going to stay here and I'm going to come to you that all right oh so you know we're just come on yes uh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, total fear. Uh, how are you doing? Did you do anything today? What'd you do? You what? 
He likes trains. Nice. Yeah, that's so exciting. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna go out. Anything, any of our kids, anything happen today? Tell me. Oh, it's a double day, a tooth and the Easter bunny. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, okay, did the, I'm just going to ask, anybody get up today and look for eggs? Anybody? Trains? We're going to look for trains. Well, Okay, I'm going to stand up. We can stand up because, all right. <laughs> Things never go as planned. <laughs> so how many people might have gotten up today to look for an Easter basket? Maybe? <laughs> yes! I want to share with you that in our early service, we had Jimmy Strickland, and I'm not even going to imagine how old he is, over 60. And um, I want you to know that he told me that his son and his husband, both in their 30s, woke up to get Easter baskets, as well as his wife. And I thought, that is awesome. Yeah, that is amazing that you would wake up. And I thought, shouldn't we all look for Easter baskets every day? I mean, think about it. When I was young, I'd wake up to the surprise, and it was wonderful. And I think we need to look for those surprises in our life, those ways in which we meet the unexpected. And so I want to encourage all of us to get up and look for surprises. Look for the unexpected. Can we do that? Can we do that? All right. And I just think that's the incredible thing about Easter is we wake up and look for that which is not expected, that which comes to us and surprises us. And it doesn't matter how old you are. In fact, I got a call from my daughters. They're 26 and 28 to tell me they're looking for their Easter eggs. It's an amazing day. Be prepared to experience the unexpected. All right, we can go sit down. I finally get you up and you just want to stay, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's Easter, so I'm going to let you dance up here. All right. <laughs>
spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood before them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven, and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is Easter. It is a time of celebration. It is a time in which we proclaim he is risen, he is risen indeed. It is the hinge pin of our faith. It is why we do not worship a dead martyr, but a risen savior. For God resurrected Christ. And because of that, we are here and we are celebrating. We have new life. So as I read this, I realized resurrection is at the center of our faith. It's what it's all about. So what is resurrection? Seriously, anybody? Because I, I got to admit, I don't have a clue. I thought about it, and I'm like, I don't know. Let me go to the dictionary. And so I looked up in the dictionary, resurrection. It's a noun. The act of resurrecting, to be resurrected. Are you kidding me? That's not really helpful. And I learned way back when in junior high that you cannot define a word by using that word to define it. It doesn't work. And so I searched more dictionaries. I finally found one that had similar to being raised from the dead, but not exactly. Thanks. That cleared it all up, didn't it? So what is resurrection? 
We know it's not just being raised from the dead, for the scriptural accounts are full of people being raised from the dead. In the Old Testament, prophets did it. We have Jesus doing it with Lazarus, raising him from the dead. And as we move into Acts, you have Peter and Paul, Peter and Paul raising people from the dead. This is different. But how? And then I remember my senior year in college. I was a senior up in Flagstaff at Northern Arizona University. For those of you not familiar with it, it would be like having a university on top of Mount Charleston. That's kind of the area. There's pine trees. It's at 8,000 feet. And it was spring break. And so I was going to drive home and spend spring break in Phoenix. I was taking my roommate, Sean, who was from Alaska, port. He had to fly out to head back to Alaska on Friday. And back in 1992, during spring break, a freak winter storm rolled into Flagstaff, like they'd never seen before. The temperatures dropped into the low 20s. It began to snow and ice. Roads began to close, and the university made the decision to keep the dorms open so that the students didn't have to leave. And yet, I knew we had to get home. So at the height of the storm on Friday, we decided that we would drive to the airport down in Phoenix, about a four-hour drive. I got to be honest, it wasn't one of my smartest decisions. <laughs> wasn't my dumbest, and we're not going to share those. <laughs> but there we were. We decided to leave, so we bundled up, got on our long underwear, our first layer, our second layer, our big old puffy jackets. If you remember the Malta Meal commercials, we were college kids looking like the multi-meal commercials. And I guess I should explain, I drove a late 90s Ford Tempo, and it didn't have heat. And so that's why we were dressing like this. And we knew that we had to get chains on the tires, and so we got chains on the tires. We dressed up, bundled up, and we were about ready to go. The only thing we had to do was pick up Camden, my fish. Now... I need to explain to you that Camden was a very special fish. Not just because he could do special tricks. Like when you filled the tank to the top, he would jump up and flop all around. And you'd have to scoop him up really quick and put him back in. And then he'd do it again. And you learn that you don't fill the tank to the top. But Camden was also there through new romances and heartbreak. Through those nights spent crying of joy and sorrow, for those long nights of studying, for those defining moments in a college student's life, Camden was there. You might want to call Camden an emotional support fish. And so I knew I couldn't take the whole tank, so Camden had a travel bowl. So we put, got the bowl, but he couldn't actually travel in the bowl because, well, as you know, he has a propensity to jump out. I'm saying he. I'm assuming he. I'm not that good with fish anatomy. But he was a blue beta. So we got our cup, scooped Camden up, put him in the drink holster, and we were set to go. And there we went, through whiteout conditions, slowly driving on icy roads with chains. What was usually an hour trip to get down off the mountain took us four, and it was freezing. And we got off the mountain, still dressed as if we are ready for the winter storm. It's spring break, so once you got down off the mountain, 80. We're getting hot. The chains have to come off the tires. And so we pulled off. We took off our outer layers, took off the chains, and Sean went to check on Camden. 
And Camden was doing a trick that he'd never done before. He was floating upside down. Yeah, any of you who've ever had fish know that that's a trick you can do once. And Sean asked, well, should I dump him? Sean, this is Camden. We're not dumping his carcass by the side of the road. He deserves the proper liturgical burial for fish. When I get home, I will flush him down the toilet. That's what you do. And so we drove. Sean dropped Sean off at the airport. I headed home. I unpacked. I got out that bowl. Still brings back memories. And then went to do what I knew I must. Into the bathroom. <laughs> Suddenly, Camden's swimming around. I don't know what happened. And I got to tell you, I never really trusted that fish again. He kind of freaked me out. And for the next year and a half, I was kind of afraid of what he could do. I tell you that to let you know Camden came back to life. Camden was not resurrected. Camden was the same as he had been before, just like Lazarus, just like all those other people in Scripture. And yet, if we read Scripture, what we find is they didn't recognize Jesus. Now, some have said it's because of grief, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure it was there. I have lost people in my life. I have grief. I lost my grandfather 35 years ago, my mother two and a half years ago. But I got to tell you, if they walked in that door, I'd know who they are. So what's going on here? What is happening? Well, let's look at Scripture. It's kind of silent on what happened. We don't know if it was silent or a bang. We don't really know. We kind of encounter it in the aftermath of resurrection, so to speak. And it's interesting how all of the Gospels seem to tell it in a different way. Like, who was there? Well, in Mark, it was Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene. In Matthew, it was Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Salome, don't know really who she is, and the other women. In John, it's Mary Magdalene. And in our Gospel today, we really don't know. It just says the woman, the women. Later on, we are told that it was Mary Martha, Mary the mother of Jesus, Joanna, don't know where she came from, and the other women who told the disciples. But who was actually there? We don't know. And what exactly happened? In Matthew, the stone was there and the angels rolled it away. In Mark, the stone is gone and the angel appears. In John, we've got two angels and the stone being rolled away. In our gospel today, we have the stone rolled away. The women enter the tomb, and then the angels appear. In two of the other Gospels, the angels are there before the women enter the tomb. So again, we're not really sure, and we're not even sure if they're angels. What's going on? We're told that there were two of them in dazzling white, like lightning. It's the same way that Luke describes the transfiguration earlier in Luke, or later on in Acts, as Luke describes the ascension. So what's going on? Well, we can acknowledge that both John and Luke were written for a Jewish audience. And according to Deuteronomy, to be truthful, you have to have two witnesses. Therefore, there's two lightning people in dazzling white here. We fully don't understand. And the women are perplexed. They don't understand it. They can't define it. I'm not sure what's going on. And then... We have that last sentence. It's not in the oldest manuscripts of Luke. It's in some of them where Peter then comes running as if the women need Peter in order to be believed. And I think there's probably another sermon in there somewhere about women telling people things and people not believing. But it follows John's narrative of 
Peter and John coming to see. And so, again, what's happening? I got to tell you, I don't really know. And yet each gospel describes it. This is the center of our faith. This is why we are Christian, because we worship a risen Lord. And yet we can't explain it. We can't fully define it. But let me ask you something. Have you ever had an encounter with God? Can you define that? Have you ever loved somebody? Can you define that empirically with knowledge? I can't. You see, I am not called to understand the resurrection. I am not called to define it. And that may surprise you. And you're thinking, oh boy, pastor, if you can't do it. But what I am called to do is believe in it, to have faith in it, to experience it and live into it. You see, if we read further on in the Gospel of Luke, and we'll get to it in the following weeks, we realize that the proof of resurrection isn't the empty tomb, but it's the experience people have with the risen Christ. And I think that is true for us today. We are not called to define the resurrection. We are not called to have knowledge of the resurrection. We are called to believe the resurrection. We are called to experience the resurrection. We are called to live into this new life. And then, of course, there's what the angels or two people say. And it's interesting because they always say something different in every gospel. Usually it's, do not be afraid. Do you not believe what he has told you? He is not here. He is risen. Go, go tell the others. But here it's, why do you look for the living among the dead? Now, I can't speak for you, but I often find myself looking for the living among the dead because I'm familiar with the dead. This new life can be scary, and I don't know what it has to bring. And sometimes I don't know where to look. And if I'm talking spiritually, there are times that I have had an experience and I want you to have that same experience, even though you can't. For example, I loved growing up going to church camp. I think everybody should go to church camp and experience it exactly the way I did. That's right, horrible food, but God loves you. Well, what I come to realize is different people have different experiences of Christ. Maybe it was in a retreat. Maybe it was praying together, and yet we tend to do that, don't we? We experienced it this way. Therefore, we want you to experience it. And I think the church is really good at this, holding on to dead things because we understand them. And we need to let them go, but new life is scary. In other words, it's not about what I want, but what can facilitate a person's experience with Christ, even if it's different than mine? That's okay. Otherwise, we'd all be wearing OP shorts and they'd be corduroy, and that's not cool. So how do we do this? How do we live in the resurrection? And, and I got to tell you, I, I struggle with it because sometimes it just comes and I experience it. And sometimes I try so hard to make it happen and nothing. And yet I have seen it. I have seen it when new things happen. I have seen it when someone says, I am accepted here. Even if I'm accepted nowhere else, I belong. Regardless of who I love, it's okay. Regardless of biology, I am living into who God made me to be. That's resurrection. If you've ever met an addict who is now a recovering addict, you know there is new life and there is resurrection. And it might not be how I would prescribe it or how I would expect it. But I'm not here to control it. Because you see, I didn't resurrect Jesus. 
God did. And while I can't define it, I have to chalk it up to one of those great mysteries of faith that I am simply called to believe, to put my trust into and live into. And I think we're all kind of in that same boat. We are called to live into and experience resurrection. Just as many children woke up today to experience surprising new things that they did not expect. Let us go forth into this evening, into the next morning, to experience new things that we do not expect. For we are called to not know resurrection, but to believe and put our faith and live in to resurrection. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Christ the Lord has risen today. Alleluia. Our hopes and dreams have come true, even if we did not know it. For we do not have to fear death, for Christ goes before us. So praise be to God who has raised Christ from the dead and given us new life, even if we empirically can't figure it out. For we celebrate today that new life is all around us. The flowers that grace our worship area shout out the good news of new life. Their colors and their shapes dance with joy at news of the resurrection. And we also rise in hope to celebrate resurrection. Yes, the journey has been long. And it doesn't end here, but rather we are given new life to go forth into the confidence of God to live into this resurrection, to live into this new life, to take that step of faith into all that God has in store for us, and to witness to the power of God that says, with God, all things are possible. For that is the power of God's love. For we are called to be bearers of light and hope to areas in which darkness still stands. So God, keep us open to the needs and hearts of other people. Help us not be so quick to condemn as we are to love. Help us to reach out in kindness and compassion whenever and wherever we can for healing and for hope. Open our hearts to receive your wondrous words and experience of love, O oh God. Help prepare us for the opportunities to serve you by serving others and remind us again of the many ways in which you continue to bless our lives and shine forth new life. God, this is what we pray, this is what we hope for, and this is what we ask in the name of the risen Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand for our hymn of celebration. Easter people, raise your voices, number 304 in the hymnal.
I do want to share with you that for our offering today, all that is given will be going beyond this church. It'll be going to help people experience resurrection and new life. It'll be divided three ways. Part of it will be going to scholarships for those wishing to go to camp, particularly a camp called Strength for the Journey, which is a camp for those people living with HIV and AIDS. I want to share with you that I had the honor and privilege of being a part of that camp back in the early 90s when things were very different. You didn't live with AIDS, but you died of AIDS. And we would, put, we would have this camp, and it was a very emotional camp because some years people wouldn't come back, and you knew what that meant. But it was also a very meaningful camp where people who were oftentimes... I'll say abused by the church, said, we're accepted here? You mean God loves us? And we have a place to belong. And in that, there is resurrection. Part of the offering will also go to help the people of Tonga. You may or may not know, in January, a volcano erupted, resulting in a tsunami or several tsunamis that decimated the island of Tonga. We know that within our conference, within even Las Vegas, we have several Tongan congregations who have family back on the islands. And we have been able to send supplies, medical and emergency supplies, back to Tonga. We have also gotten with the con Tongan congregations and said, is there anything you want to send, gifts of love, back to your families? And we will do that. Uh, and if you know anything about Tongan people, they have large families, not defined necessarily by blood, but by love. And so everything sent back to the islands gets spread throughout the islands. And we have sent two large shipping containers and are planning to send two more. And part of our offering today will go to help bring new life and resurrection to the people of Tonga. Part of it will also go to a program called Strengthening the Black Church with that portion going to help our sister church at Zion. You may remember several years ago their sanctuary burned and they had to redefine themselves as who they are and they have some great stories of new life and resurrection. And One, it's coming. It's pretty exciting but I can't tell you yet. How's that for a teaser? But we are going to be a part of that so that is exciting. And I simply want to let you know that's where the offering is going today. If our ushers will come forward now is a time for the giving of God's tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. And we know that as we give, we give more than just gifts. We give service and we give our talents. So as we pass the plate, listen to the talents of Ken and Michelangelo as they bring us the word of God in music.
God, you proclaimed your powerful love by raising Jesus from death to eternal life. We are grateful that you forgive our sin and bring peace to all who trust in you. Help us to offer your forgiveness and reconciliation and relationship with people in our lives as we live into resurrection. May we respond to your tremendous love with glad and generous hearts. We dedicate our lives, our gifts, our offerings in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. Amen. Amen. knowing that we do not need to define it. Simply believe in it, embrace it, and live into it. Amen. Amen.
Pick up uh, 